Hi, I'm Ali and welcome to the China Repair Studio. So today I thought I would continue doing restoring this, these, this pair of 18th century Delftware vases and as you can see they're broken on the tops. Now I have had a couple of videos previous to these in which I have wash them and broken them apart because there were some bits on here which were um, had been put on previously and made up and they weren't very good at all so we have broken those off we've cleaned them and they're perfectly clean now and on another tutorial I actually fixed there was a couple of pieces which I'll just show you here um, which we put back together again and stuck with glue now I thought today, I thought I would put on the pieces again and you know, onto the rim and also I'm going to do it on one and on the other one I'm going to make a new part which will probably I think be this one. So again if you haven't subscribed before please subscribe, please like and please share and let's get going. Right, so here we are and we have our two vases here. Now, looking at the vases, I this, this, this was broken in three pieces and I fixed those on another tutorial. And I've looked at this vase, both the vases, and found that it actually does slot in quite nicely here. So I think what we're going to do today is we're going to glue this into position and then on another tutorial we can finish off the rim. Well, I think we're just going to glue this in position today. And on the other bars, there was another piece and there was just two pieces which I have glued and it's dried. And to be honest, I have looked everywhere on this vase and also on the other vase. And there's nowhere where it actually slots in nicely and it could be in the middle and to be honest sometimes you just have to think is it worth doing and you know putting in that original or should I start from scratch do a whole piece and glaze it and you know airbrush and paint it and I think actually that's what I'm going to do with this piece I'm not going to use this original piece because I can't find really where it goes in and it doesn't slot in very well so I'll keep hold of that so what I'm going to do first is we're going to glue this onto here and then we're going to make a whole new piece up for this vase. Now when we're gluing I like to use Araldite and I like to use a slow release glue and it's you use 50% of one and 50% of the other. Now I've got here a lid and I'm always collecting lids because they're really useful for putting in glue and paint. So always keep hold of your lids from your milk tops and things. And I've got here a small little pick. Now what you want to do is just mix. We don't need too much because it's only a little bit. And I, as I say, it fits here nicely. So we'll take one part. So don't need very much, just a little bit there. Always put it on the lid back on or the top straight away so you don't end up with sort of any gunkiness spilling out or it drying. So that's the dark and then we we'll use the other part. You could use one which dries a lot quicker but I like to have a bit of wiggle room with Araldite and glue so I do think it's better to have a slow uh, slow hardening one. So once we've done that and they're together we want to combine them. It doesn't take too long and then it ends up going sort of a cloudy colour if you can see there. Now I do like to use a bit of titanium dioxide powder which you don't have to to be honest but it does take off any, any yellowness because I think you'll find that with a lot of glues, majority of glues, over a period of time, they tend to go, they tend to discolour and go a yellow colour. 
So here we are, there's the glue, and I'm just going to go into my gallery. Ever prepared. Here we go. So here we are, here's the titanium dioxide powder. A little goes a long way, and I've had this for years. As you can see, there's, you know, there's a lot. So I'll just open that up. And we're just going to take a tiny bit And you just want to mix it in now you don't want to put too much powder in because the more powder you put into the glue the weaker it will become so you only want a little bit just for it to stop the discoloration just mix that in nicely right so once that's done I, like, I do like to put my lids on and keep in control with everything so that's lid we put that down there and I'm just going to find, here we go, we need some scotch tape or something which isn't too sticky. I do find sellotape can leave a bit of residue behind, so I tend to use this one to be honest, magic tape. And we just want to find our piece again, here it is, and see where it needs to go. Now obviously it doesn't need gluing all the way along, it's probably about halfway to about there. Now when you're gluing, really important not to glue both the sides. If you glue here and you glue here and you stick it together, it's almost like a magnet going the other way and it will try to pull apart. You just want it to be on one side, then place, and that will really adhere quite nice and easily. As I say, so I would never glue both sides. So I'm going, I'll probably just do this part actually. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll just do this part. Double check and look both sides to roughly to where it needs to be about there. So then we take our glue and we're just going to place it on here. So about this area. Now you don't want it you don't want too much glue, but you want enough so it's you know it's going to cover and you want to make sure all the cracks are covered. We can always clean it off afterwards. I do find if you if it's summertime, it sounds very silly, or in a, if you're in a warm country or if your room is very warm, the glue tends to become thinner and it actually you get a tighter fit. If your glue is cold, um, if your room is cold, it will it slightly thickens and you don't get such a tight fit as I say. So if you can, you know, try to keep it warm. And I'm just going to take off a couple of these just to get me prepared. And then we want to find, there we are, and just take it off slightly with our fingers. And you want to hold it down. And then you can feel it and look both sides to make sure that it's nice and in line. And then we just take our tape and just pull it so it's tight and then I take the other tape and I'm going to go from the inside as well because I like to see it both ways because it's slow it's really useful we can keep adjusting and I'll probably look at this again in probably half an hour and then maybe make some slight adjustments and keep going back to it and adjusting it so for the moment, that feels quite good. You can tell by your fingers if you feel it, to feel if there's any ridges, and just to make sure it's nice and tight. So there we go. So we're just going to leave him for a bit. The aerodite's going to take about 24 hours to cure. The longer you leave it, the harder it becomes. So as I say, I'll go back in half an hour just to see, check how it is. So we'll leave that there. Right, so let's get on with the second one. Now, with the second one, as I said before, I looked everywhere and couldn't find somewhere to place this. So I think I'd rather, instead of trying to fight my way incorporating it into something, I think personally, I'm just going to start from scratch and just do a fresh piece here. Now, what you need is milliput. Not necessarily milliputs, it's what I use. I'm sure there are other 
brands on the market but I do find this works extremely well it's great to sand down it takes it adheres easily to your existing item so I've got the super fine white and it does come I can see here in other colors which I'll go through in another tutorial so what you want to do we take it out and we want to you again like the aerodite glue you'd want 50 of this 50% of that depending on how large the piece is so I'm going to break a bit off just trying to think so it's quite large and I think that's probably fine again as soon as you've done that you've broken it off put it straight back in now you can find mini puss very easily on I think it's on Amazon but I'm sure if you go into your local art suppliers they would sell it as well now when I'm mixing together to make sure I've got the right the same quantity I find it easier to actually put it into a roll roll it into a ball so there we are we have one ball there and I do have a knife here so I might just cut it and then I can just roll that again and see if it's roughly the same size which is his actually that's pretty good um so actually maybe a tiny tiny bit more take a tiny bit more smidge off that right so again we want to just make sure that is nice and secure there and let's just put him back in there squeeze him in right so that's the way and then you want to start mixing together now I have here, as I say, a knife and also a rolling pin. So you can just roll it out. Not necessary. You can actually use your fingers. It's up to you. Now, when you're mixing, it doesn't take too long. You want it nice and combined. This takes a couple of minutes. You just want to keep mixing. Now, I've had lots of people asking me about pricing. You can price per hour, you know, if you're doing this for somebody else, because obviously you've got to think of the materials and but mainly your time. And I do find with any sort of form of art, be it painting, pottery, you know, China restoration, anything which is creative, it's very hard as an artist um, to get the balance right on pricing. You know, you always want to not price too high. But actually it has to be worth your while but also it depends where you live you know and if it's a friend you're doing a favor for it, it just depends but you know if you're you know wanting to think of it as a business you actually do want to price so you know you're actually making some money now that is combining quite nicely and as i've said before you almost want it so it feels like blue tack in the hands so it's quite squidgy right so once we've done that you want to just get a rough idea of this now because usually i'll just put on milly put straight onto an item and it doesn't need glue but because it's quite a large sort of area here i am going to put some araldite glue on there first but before i do that i want to make sure i've got the right shape because you don't want to be taking it on and off with the glue so we want to see roughly we'll just give it a rough go first of where we are now obviously that's too much so we can just take some off with a knife so if i cut some away now this is a bit which takes a bit of time it doesn't matter if it's too thick i'd rather it be too thick because we can actually sand it down afterwards you know if you wanted to you can try to do it this way or you know maybe even you know going here on the original perhaps and seeing right it's there so you can actually see how high it needs to be so perhaps we can just cut there so very carefully minding any fingers i'm glad to say this isn't a very sharp knife so we have basically the height there now 
again it's a lot thicker but we can sand now and then you can just place in and start to get a rough idea again it's quite long so you can cut some bits I can just take it out now Again, you know, with the rolling pin, if you do want to, I just want to show you other ways in which you could, if you want to make it thinner, you can get a rolling pin and you can just roll it slightly just to, you know, even it out to the thickness or the thinness of what you need. Again, though, you do need to scrape it off again. But as I say, it doesn't matter about it being too thick, we can sand it. It's really about getting the shape. Maybe a tiny bit, a little bit less. Let's take that off again. Take them off there. And it's just trial and error. I do think it's a bit on the thick side, so I am going to, again, roll it a little bit. There we go. And then you think it's got to lift it up and it all starts to break apart. So there we are, we roll it. Again, we can just judge by the other parts. Let's get it back on. The good thing with milliputs, you can, you know, it's a bit like plasticine. You can just keep pressing it and moulding it. You could let it dry, be a mould and come off. But I'm just going to do it in one big hit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to sand it. So I think I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I think that's kind of about the right slightly thick but that's fine because we can sand so I'm going to just peel it off slightly now there are molds which you can do but that's a huge big thing which I do now and again but really isn't for the beginner this is a to be honest a more simple way so let's give this another go let's see let's take any, if you have any bits just take those off start to get a bit messy now and we can just See from there. Yeah, let's take that off about there. Yeah. Right, what I'm going to do now, quite pleased with that. That's roughly the shape and size, and you can keep playing with it. Otherwise, it'll be here forever. So I'm now just take that little bit off there. So we've got our glue. Again, it's slow release, so it's had so it's still nice, and we can still use it. It hasn't dried still soft and you just want to apply again just a little little bit of glue we don't need too much it's just to really make sure that the milli put stays on right there we go that down so let's get some more hair to make sure it's just right and we're just going to place one there we can squeeze it we can squidge it into place as i say it doesn't matter too much because let's take that off there because we can actually sand it Higher. So obviously the bottom was not cut straight, so you know hadn't broken off clean. Now, if you have some water, you can also get some water, and you can start to just smooth it down so it's nice and smooth. It's not necessary though. So there. there we go, some squirt of water onto there, and you can just start to smooth it down, you know, and you'll find it will just start to get a nice shape. Now, what you could do if you do have bits where it's missing bits and pieces, 
doesn't matter we can always go back to it again and you know if you take your milliputs which you still have if you have a piece probably if you put it into some cling film again i would roll it in a tight ball if you wrap it in some cling film the air is not going to dry it out so you can for a bit longer take bits off and you can add to as well if you think oh there's a bit of a, a gap here and it needs something there i'll just take that off there so i'm quite pleased with that shapes coming on it doesn't matter about the top because as i say we're going to be sanding but you want it to overlap because if it doesn't overlap you're going to end up with a ridge and you're not going to be able to blend it through and so you want to make sure it's overlapping on both sides inside and out again it doesn't matter on the top because we can sand that better to go over than go under and then just get it like that now mini put again it takes a good 24 hours for it to dry which is fine because um, then once it's dry we can start to sand um, and just get it you know into position so that's how I would do it I wouldn't do it so it's exactly right because there's nothing to sand there's no wiggle room so always go slightly bigger just a tiny bit you don't want too much work for yourself but maybe a slightly slightly thicker slightly bit lot bigger so you can actually sand and blend in with the rest so we're going to leave him here so we have him and we have this one here so again we'll leave those and in the next video i think we will continue blending this and finishing some milliputs all along here so then they're both together ready for sanding and then spraying and painting so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful and i will see you in the next one okay bye